From their shared experiences of loss and trauma to their mutual need for survival in a world taken over by the cordyceps fungus, here are all the reasons why Joel and Ellie's bond in The Last of Us is so strong and unbreakable. Starting with a universal bond stronger than pretty much every other emotion. Joel and Ellie share a connection that develops between two people when they both lose someone they love. HBO's latest hit thriller understands the aspect of loss and grief much better than any other show on screen at the moment. The core of the trauma-heavy story is the tragedy suffered by Joel and Ellie. Instead of making it a standard zombie horror show, HBO has decided to make The Last of Us feel more like an intimate, character-driven drama. And the best part about that drama is the father-daughter bond shared between the two main characters. Every character's death is a turning point and an important building block for the two's relationship. They come together over the feelings of grief, trauma, and heartache that they share due to their respective painful pasts. These feelings never really end up fading for the two characters because the show keeps on introducing and then killing off characters that we grow fond of within the span of a few episodes. It's gut-wrenching. But instead of using it to further the narrative of the show, the writers use these deaths to slowly deepen the connection between Joel and Ellie. Their bond came into being very gradually, if I'm being honest. Don't we all remember how snippy and curt Ellie was in the first episode? It was in the beginning of that episode that we saw why Joel is as emotionally closed off as he is. The death of his daughter Sarah at the hands of a soldier following orders right after the cordyceps fungal infection outbreak left a gaping hole in his chest. He turned into a stony, hard-to-read mercenary who took on odd jobs to survive. And then, along came this witty, quirky, and extremely awesome teenager who had a penchant for attracting trouble. Now here was a problem Joel couldn't fix with his fists or his guns. Marlene tasked Joel with delivering the 14-year-old to another group of fireflies. And with each progression episode, the bond between Joel and Ellie grew. They spent a good amount of time getting to know one another and having each other's backs. I mean, personally, I found that scene where Ellie shot Brian as he tried to kill Joel quite enlightening. Joel's saved Ellie's life quite a few times before that, but that was the first time he knew for sure that Ellie would choose to save his life at even a moment's notice. After losing his friend Tess in a brutal and tragic way, having someone who looked out for him was pretty meaningful to him. The lengths that Ellie would go to in order to protect Joel are pretty sweet, actually. Considering the first time they met, she charged at him with her signature knife. The dynamics between them changed over the course of the next three episodes, though. Their relationship went from hostility for each other to laughing over a dumb joke right before falling asleep inside their bedrolls. Between you and me, I wasn't sure if Ellie really liked Joel in the beginning. Right after Tess blew herself up to kill the swarm of infected coming after the trio, Ellie and Joel were left alone on their journey to the Fireflies. The teenage girl had a lot of burning questions, and Joel isn't the most talkative type. The dynamic between them was strained and tense, but slowly, with her childlike wonder and curiosity, as well as her really witty commentary on pretty much everything, Ellie managed to win over the brooding, dark, and mysterious Joel. Joel had a pretty good reason to keep the 14-year-old at arm's length. He lost his daughter in a devastating way and suffered from PTSD after her death. It's pretty obvious to anyone watching the show that Joel is extremely terrified of opening up his heart. His poor 56-year-old heart just couldn't take another loss. At the end of the third episode, we see Joel's emotional armor chip away. 
piece by piece. After hiking up for hours to Frank and Bill's place and finding the beloved couple dead, he took their car and helped Ellie put on her seatbelt. The two share a cute bonding moment, which is the first of many more to come. Joel's snarkiness decreases over the next episode. He's kinder with Ellie and even laughs at some of her jokes. Her confident and cheerful nature is way too endearing for him to resist. Their bonding mainly takes place in this episode, as Ellie reads Joel a few puns from a joke book and finds an adult magazine in the back of the car. The Merc's paternal instincts come flooding back as he realizes he's begun to genuinely care about the quirky teenager. Once, while the two are camping out in the middle of the night to get some rest in, he answers her pun correctly, despite himself. The 56-year-old smiles to himself after that, and we can see that Ellie's growing on him. Over the course of the next few weeks, Joel begins to feel responsible for Ellie. He tries his level best to keep her safe, and we can see that it has more to do than just keeping Tess's promise. He stays up all night to stand guard over the teenager and sacrifices his much-needed sleep. In this post-apocalyptic world, it seems like the two only have one another to keep company. With each passing day, Joel seems to see the likeness between Sarah and Ellie. He doesn't want to fail one more person depending on him, and so he goes above and beyond to try to get Ellie to the Fireflies. We see their bond develop in a very wholesome way. In the second episode, Joel stays up and keeps his gun pointed at Ellie as she sleeps, ready to shoot her at the first sign of her being infected. Just a mere two episodes later, he stays up all night with his back to her to protect her. This shows just how much she's grown on him. These two did not trust each other at the beginning of the series. He didn't even trust her not to turn into one of the infected, and he never let her have a gun in their early days either. Slowly though, we see a marked improvement in their relationship, and in one episode, Joel even teaches Ellie how to use a gun. I mean, come on, that's the post-apocalyptic world version of teaching your kid how to drive a car. It was pretty wholesome, not gonna lie. The reason the two are able to bond as the times go by is that they're actually kind of similar. If you think about it, he makes sure to hide his emotions so well that Ellie thought for a long time that he was mad at her for being the cause of Tess's death. Ellie, too, can hide her feelings pretty well. When Joel stabs Brian to death, we see tears roll down her cheeks. But when she turns back to the mercenary, she doesn't let her moment of weakness show. She puts on a brave face, much like Joel does when they're facing groups of the infected or being shot at by raiders. Maybe one of the reasons why Joel grows so fond of Ellie is that he can see bits of himself inside her. She has the same relentless, unyielding spirit that he does. And that's everything on why the bond between Joel and Ellie is just so darn strong.